good evening everyone i uh, will see you uh, with uh, may dynamic uh, mrs s a 24 year old housewife from polur uh, presented with complaints of hyperpigmented patches over the cheeks for the past 6 months and photo sensitivity for the past 6 months and weight loss of 15 kg in the past 3 months so uh, she also had complaints of increased hair fall she had polyarthralgia for the past one week which involved small joints of bilateral hands shoulders and knees she also had complaints of dry mouth in the past 6 months past history she had uh, gestational diabetes mellitus and gestational hypertension with uh, severe preeclampsia diagnosed 4 years back and she has past history of two abortions in the past uh, and one abortion was two uh, two years back when she had a missed abortion at 45 days of gestation and uh, um, a second abortion was at uh, 60 days of gestation due to uh, absent fetal cardiac activity she had to undergo uh, medical termination of pregnancy so on examination um, she was vitally stable she had a, a bilateral pitting pedal edema other uh, uh, examination was normal but on the other uh, findings were she had non scarring alopecia with multiple erythematous plaques seen over bilateral forearms she had palatal ulcers and discrete hyperpigmented plaques with central depigmentation was seen over the scalp malar area and bilateral conical region so uh, like a uh, discoid lesions were seen there was no skin thickening or tightening noted and systemic examination on presentation was uh, unremarkable and she has normal findings and the differential at the time uh, considered were an underlying connective tissue disorder with a systemic lupus erythematosus as her first differential with constitutional mucocutaneous and musculoskeletal domains involved and mixed connective tissue disorder and overlap syndromes are also considered an initial investigation she had um, anemia and the leukopenia with normal platelet counts uh, her electrolytes were normal initially and uh, uh, renal function tests were normal and uh, uh, liver function tests were normal and she had ldh of 336 crp was 3.81 urine retin showed uh, proteinuria uh, blood uh, and uh, rbcs were 80 per hyper field and 24 hour urine protein test was done which showed 259 mg of protein excreted uh, over 24 hours and autoimmune workup uh, she had ana 2 plus speckled uh, uh, with uh, cytoplasmic fluorescences and uh, increased uh, un rnp and uh, she had low c3 and c4 with uh, slightly increased dsd na levels also uh considering her uh, past history of abortions and uh, abortion we did an apla workup but it came uh, uh, negative ex except for lupus anticoagulant mild positive so she, uh, she fulfilled the systemic lupus erythematosus uh, diagnostic criteria with acr ular criteria of 33 points uh, with the uh, following domains involved uh, she had hematological involvement uh, mucocutaneous uh, musculoskeletal renal and immunological involvement were there and her uh, disease activity score was 23 points but during the hospital stay uh, she developed diffuse abdominal pain which was severe dull aching uh, not varying with uh, movement or position no postprandial aggravation and was no she had no jaundice uh, she complained of severe pain and uh, she had uh, episodes of vomiting also which was non projectile and non bilious and she complained of abdominal fullness and upon examination we found uh, her to have abdominal distension uh, com comparatively and uh, had diffuse tenderness overall she had shifting dullness present and uh, on auscultation had sluggish bowel sounds and perirectal examination showed uh, uh, no fecal staining so the possible differentials considered at that point were um, in the background of sle and acute pancreatitis acute mesenteric ischemia intestinal pseudo obstruction and electrolyte abnormalities uh, were also considered so she was evaluated for the same her amylase lipase level were normal uh, it's uh, 19 uh, uh, amylase and 95 uh, amylase and 95 lipase with uh, uh, and electrolytes at the time of presentation was were in the normal range electrolyte potassium level the hypokalemia we uh, thought of which was in the normal range so two differentials were this acute mesenteric ischemia and intestinal pseudo obstruction and uh, uh, x ray was taken abdominal x ray in erect position which showed dilated bowel loops along with multiple uh, multiple air fluid levels uh, the marking were in the uh, possible uh, small bowel 4.3 cm uh, dilated loop was loop were there and maximum 5.89 cm uh, dilated loop was there so this uh, uh, 369 rule per se it uh, fulfills the uh, criteria for a dilated bowel loop uh, with uh, small bowel if it's more than 3 cm we can consider as a dilated bowel loop and for colon it should be more than 6 cm and cecal dilatation at least 9 cm should be there so she had uh, 
dilated ball loops so with this a uh, possible small ball obstruction was considered and we went ahead with the ct um, angiography and it showed a d3 segment of the duodenum uh, and the proximal jejunal loops were dilated with stasis of contents along with uh, we noted a bilateral hydrourethronephrosis also uh, she we did a ultrasound 3 days back which there were no hydrourethronephrosis noted but in the ct it was picked up Uh, there are no signs of dynamic bowel obstruction or any mesenteric ischemia. No, there are no features of mes mesenteric fat stranding uh, was there. So uh, with this, a pro possible intestinal pseudo obstruction was considered. So it's a quite rare manifestation in uh, seen in SLE. And the pathogenesis uh, considered were uh, is a uh, there are still uh, under. Uh, research uh, exact cause is not known but probable uh, etiologies can be a uh, immune complex deposition uh, in the blood vessel causing a vasculitis and chronic vasculitis uh, leading to um, uh, muscle um, uh, damage uh, causing this or it could be a direct uh, involvement of the smooth muscle cells a myopathy of the smooth muscles can be possibly there uh, so uh, this one she presented a similar picture of abdominal pain distension and vomiting uh, so uh, both these components can be there and other thing was uh, the recent studies noted where a generalized visceral high muscle dysmotility mortality has been reported uh, recently uh, all these cases with uh, uh, very limited studies have been done in uh, intestinal pseudo obstruction but uh, all uh, two three major studies done show 73.8 percentage of these cases coexist with urethrohydronephrosis so a common uh, pathophysiology can be due to a, a smooth muscle dysmotility because uh, both smooth muscle uh, uh areas are involved along with hepatobiliary dilatation and intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation has also been reported so a generalized mega viscera of lupus has been reported which uh, uh, shows more organ involvement and uh, this uh, visceral dilatation in more than one organ system so possibly now we antibodies against smooth muscle or a vasculitis change uh, uh, these are the two uh, possible uh, pathophysiologies we are considering uh, for this uh, presentation and uh, This another one study. Uh, the first study showed forty-two patient with uh, intestinal pseudo obstruction, which was followed up. Uh, they had seventy-three percent had urethral hydronephrosis, and uh, in twenty-two patients uh, followed up in another study showed sixty-three point six percent involvement of urethral hydronephrosis. This can actually help uh, differentiate between uh, acute mesenteric ischemia and uh, uh, so intestinal pseudo obstruction because uh, we can't uh, both can present in the same way. Both can present as um, uh, bowel obstruction, uh, acute bowel, uh, bowel obstruction features, but uh in the studies done for with uh, mesenteric ischemia they don't have an association with uh, uh, ureter hydronephrosis and there are specific mesenteric fat stranding features which can allow us to differentiate uh, between these two condition and the overall the gastrointestinal manifestation of sle this um, study done by uh, done in india with the cmclos uh, rheumatology department also involved it's a big uh, it's a cohort of 2503 patients uh, registered from 2008 to 2022 uh they were followed up for uh, a lot of manifestation and gastrointestinal manifestations were predominantly ascites uh, 6.5% that was a common manifestation along with intestinal pseudo obstruction was present only in 0.1% of the patients uh overall 243 patients out of the 2503 developed ga manifestation out of the only three patients developed a uh, intestinal pseudo obstruction this one, and uh, they had significant uh, higher mortality in patients who developed gastrointestinal manifestation the uh, they had early mortality and uh, overall mortality was also uh, increased in this group with twice uh, uh, the mortality rate was twice as high in the gi manifestation group compared to the patients without gi manifestation so it could reflect a high disease activity gi manifestation present means the patient usually have a high disease activity and uh, some other uh, manifestation have also been uh, documented like leukopenia is more uh, common in this patient and uh, dsd in a level is usually will be uh, low compared to the disease activity like this patient also had not have very much uh, dsd in elevation 150 was initial dsd and also so the treatment options for uh, intestinal pseudo obstruction uh, so conservative management with ng dependent drainage can be done along with high dose corticosteroids are required still major studies there are no clear guidelines regarding how to uh, ma manage any patient with uh, uh, gastrointestinal manifestation but we can take it as a major organ involvement and we are treating with high dose steroids and lot of case report also have shown improvement with high dose corticosteroids along with secondary agents like iv immunoglobulin also has been shown uh, to uh, uh, good improvement in these cases and cyclophosphamide azathioprine mycophenolate mofetil can be used as a maintenance therapy 
and prokinetic agents can be used as supportive management uh, like erythromycin and itopride has been used in these cases. And the overall outcome is uh, these two studies that I earlier spoke about is 42 patient uh, uh, followed up in the say, Asian population, uh, around 9.5 uh, uh, percent uh, deaths were noted with three deaths within one year of presentation of intestinal food obstruction. And in another study with 22 cases, mortality was 18 percentage with three deaths within six months of presentation of intestinal food obstruction. So in our patient also, we uh, can manage conservatively uh, initially uh, with the NG-dependent drainage and analgesics were given. We gave her uh, uh, hydroxychloroquine 300 mg and uh, tablet prednisolone 60 mg once daily. She received IV methyl prednisolone pulse after this uh, diagnosis. And uh, uh, post, uh, we also gave a cyclophosphamide pulse therapy and she's been uh, coming back uh, for monthly cyclo uh, cyclophosphamide injections. And her symptoms resolved in one week with this management. So the key takeaways, uh, GI manifestations in SLE are rare, uh, with only in the study also we've seen only 9.7% of patients had uh, GI manifestations, but they are uh, clinically important as they can be life-threatening. Even pseudo-obstruction can go into peritonitis and can uh, go into rupture also. Uh, it's as uh, important as a dynamic ball obstruction and uh, can be a presenting features of SLE. There have been case reports where intestinal pseudo obstruction was the first initial presentation of a patient with SLE. So at this age, uh, with the age group uh, fitting into the picture of SLE with other history and examination suggested or connective tissue disorder, you should always consider this as a possibility because in the previous studies also, a lot of patients underwent laparotomy because of uh, uh, probable suspecting a dynamic ball obstruction, which adds up to the morbidity and uh, adds up to complications of the procedure itself. So we can avoid that if you if you are suspecting uh, this is a possible uh, manifestation and uh, it is responsive to immunosuppressive therapy. So to avoid unnecessary laparotomy, we can uh, do this. A need for representation. Currently, GI manifestation are not included in the ACR ULAR criteria or the SLED-I criteria, which we commonly use. Uh, only the BILAG uh, criteria has been uh, using the GI manifestation to assess disease severity. But a lot of these GI manifestations are associated with high disease severity and may require higher dose of immunosuppressive therapy and higher mortality, not only because of the manifestation itself, because of the complication of treatment, a lot of infection also are common. So we need to uh, uh, see gastrointestinal manifestation as an important feature of SLE. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Narendran. Uh, how do you attribute the pseudo obstruction to SLE per se and not other causes? Why do you say it's because of the SLE? And maybe not because of some electrolyte abnormalities or something else. At that time, uh, we considered electrolyte abnormality, and the time of present on the day, she had normal electrolyte uh, uh, levels. And post this vomiting episode, she did develop hypokalemia, which we treated. But uh, at the time of presentation with the abdominal distension and fullness, uh, you know, at the time, she did not have any electrolyte abnormality. Is there any way to prove that it's because of SLE that this pseudo obstruction is happening? Uh, with the uh, only histopathological correlate or something like that. So some histopathologic uh, diagnosis have been seen with uh, in, all, uh, in this patient, there is decreased smooth muscle cells also, myocyte activity, uh, uh, the cells are uh, less, and there is vasculitic vascular features of vasculite is also seen in some of the patients. But that's the two theories we are still having. Uh, whether it is due to vasculite is causing a uh, uh, myocyte damage chronically and uh, causing myocyte dysfunction, or it is a direct, some antibodies have also been evaluated uh, uh, attacking directly the smooth muscle cell, both in the kidney, uh, liver, uh, intrahepatic biliary uh, radical dilation has been noted in some patients with pancreatic uh, duct enlargement also. So whether it is a diffuse process involving all these systems is still unknown, uh, but uh, still pathology. And how do you attribute the bilateral uh, hydroeurotonephrosis? Um, it's, uh, what happened to this hydroeurotonephrosis in this patient? One follow-up. We did not do a follow-up imaging. So she improved in the uh, one week. After we did not do a follow-up imaging, but uh, based on this, all these case uh, case series and reports, uh, there is a consistent involvement of uh, hydroeurotonephrosis and uh, uh, this intestinal food obstruction, and both uh, have our involvement of smooth muscle cells. So possible correlation is uh, part of. Was it a significant hydroeurotonephrosis? Because you mentioned the renal functions are normal and. This so is my mild, uh, this one, um, it's not very significant. But three days back, she received an ultrasound that did not uh, show any hydrotonephrosis. At this time of presentation, uh, she had uh, hydrotonephrosis. Any questions? The 
Yeah, she had major organ organ involvement, uh, severe involvement, only GA. So we uh, discussed the case in the uh, unit, and we decided to go ahead with the cyclophosphamide pulse because of the GA involvement. Consider a renal biopsy for her. So we did consider uh, due to this ascites at the time uh, we couldn't able to do, but we are planning to do a renal biopsy. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending. That brings us to the close. Thank you.